If you are growing in raised beds, but you're trying to figure out how you are going to irrigate those raised beds, then you are going to want to check this out today. What if you could come up with an irrigation solution that you would hardly ever have to water? Well, today I am at Green Thumb Nursery in my hometown of Russellville, Arkansas, and we're gonna show you a very interesting way of setting your raised beds up where you don't have to do a lot of watering. And maybe, except for the peak times of the year, maybe no watering at all. I know, it's crazy, but it can be done, and we are gonna show it to you now. So this is Tammy Danson. She is the owner of the Green Thumb Nursery. She is a retired school teacher, and she has opened this nursery fairly recently and i have to admit this is amazing what i love about this nursery is that you have made room for edible plants vegetables herbs mm -hmm. you have signs all over here about pollinators mm -hmm. and natural things and that just makes this nursery so unique but what i love the most is i saw your raised beds when yeah. i came here for the first time and then i started hearing the buzz about the unique way that you water them so this unique raised bed vegetable watering is something you've done at your own home yes so before we get into the nuts and bolts because we are actually going to be filling one today and we're going to tell everybody and show everybody how that works what results have you seen in your own garden uh, so i have 25 of these raised beds at home and over the last six or seven years um, we started out with a few um, it worked so well so we added on and now we're up to 25 and um, I, it, they're just so much more lush because they get that consistent watering and then I don't have to remember to water them. And I've just noticed that they're just a lot healthier plants and they produce a lot more uh, produce because of that um, non-stop watering. I'm so glad that I caught you at a yeah, good time because you you're not finished. You're, you've got several of them already done and already yes. growing lush. Yes. But you've got a couple that you're still filling. Yeah. We, um, one of the things I wanted to do when I did the nursery was to teach organic gardening classes. So we um, are building some here at the nursery and um, we have two more left. And so we saved those so that we could show you the process. Okay, so yeah. let's go on out there. Okay. And what we're gonna do is you're gonna actually show us what this system is and we're gonna watch you put it together. Okay. And then at the end, we'll just be able to see what it looks like when it's all filled. Yes. How's that sound? Sounds good. All right, tell me about these raised beds, what you are doing before we even start the irrigation process. Okay, so first we built um, four by eight beds and we've leveled them because we're on incline and made sure that they were flat so that all the material on the inside will be the same. Okay, so tell us about the plastic and why you line the bed with plastic. So we lined the bed with plastic because we're going to create a wet reservoir that will hold rainwater or water to feed the plants. We used a uh, six or eight mil plastic, doesn't matter what color, it comes in different colors, but it just needs to be the stronger. Um, I have seen where people have used pool liners. Um, it's really about just something strong that's going to not tear up over, over time. So we just stapled it to the top. It also creates a barrier between treated wood. Um, a lot, some treated wood's food safe, but just to be safe, if you, it keeps on the, the median of the dirt separate from the, the chemicals in the treated too, so. Okay, so your first step, if I'm understanding you right, is to fill the bottom with rocks. Explain why, and maybe because a lot of us have been told that we don't ever want to have rocks at the bottom of a container pot or something like that, but this is completely different. Explain a little bit about the rocks and also how deep the rocks need to go. So we use river rock. It's a rounded rock. That way it doesn't tear the plastic. If you used other kind of gravel that has jagged edges, it'll punch your hole and it won't hold the water. So river rock works better. Um, it's to create void between the space for the water to, you know, just like a river, you know, so it's creating that reservoir, but the rock is just um, in there. It also holds the dirt up. So when you add the dirt, it doesn't sink down on the water. So it creates a harder surface, but then the water gets in between those rocks to make that reservoir. How deep are you gonna be filling with the rock? Um, about 12 inches. Uh, if you go much less than that, you're just gonna have to um, water more often, I mean, you know, fill the bed up or whatever. Um, so they recommend 12 inches. 
um, of that and then you'll have 12 inches of dirt as well so so basically the 12 inches of rock on the bottom is this reservoir where the water is going to be going in between the, the individual rock pieces right and then from there you're going to show us later how right. that water actually gets to the soil and gets to the plants right so the it's it's just going to hold it like a swimming pool or a bathtub so you'll have all that water but and the water will be around the rock and then once again the rock will just hold the you know it's to hold that dirt so it doesn't sag down into the water So you mentioned the overflow. Explain that to me, and that's, I guess, the next step in the process, right? Yes, so we put in that overflow pipe, so in case you forget to um, take the water hose out to fill it, or if it's rained many, many inches for days and days and days and doesn't quit. Like last week. Like last week. Um, the water won't come all the way up because it does have plastic, so it's gonna hold it all the way to the top. So then it would increase chances of root rot, or just different diseases and stuff for just water just sitting. Um, so we put an overflow at the top of where the reservoir is so that when it gets to that level, the water starts to, to um, seep out onto the ground. And then so it never lets you go past that point. And it's, it's 12 inches, that's just what you, that's the amount that they recommend to have in these beds for this process and so that's where we put the overflow pipe and so we drill a hole we use pvc pipe it doesn't have to go all the way across just in about i mean a third or half of the way um so that we've already dr drilled the hole all we have to do is just poke a hole in the plastic but we make a very tiny hole because we want it as tight as possible around this so it doesn't seep out around the plastic oh we find it So we just make a very tiny tear and then, Cole, I'm gonna let you. Um, it's so tight you have to hammer it in. And that just keeps it from seeping out around the edges. And so now it sits just right on top of the rock. So when it rains, the water collects, or if you fill it with a water hose, um, as soon as it gets to this point, it just starts draining out onto the ground. Okay, so a big part of this wicking bed is this pipe right here. And you can put it in like we're doing now, or you can add it before you add the rock all right, together. So right. explain all this to me. So this is a corrugated, um, three or four inch sewer pipe so it's got holes in it the only purpose to this is if you get into the summer it has not rained and uh, your plants need to be watered you want to fill that reservoir at the bottom um, you just put your water hose down this and the water shoots out and fills up the bottom bed so this is just the way to deliver water to it if you're not collecting rainwater um, but that way you still get water coming from below right. to water so this is strictly only if you have to fill the bed yourself manually so because you are just pouring water into that that's why you don't have to have it the length of the bed right because it's eventually gonna all it's gonna anyway. just like a bathtub where you have the faucet coming down it's just gonna automatically push the water all the way down and fill up so you don't have to we've ran it halfway sometimes but we found that it works just as well and it's more cost effective if you don't use a long piece of pipe so we just do it long enough to where we can actually cover it um, so i don't know two foot long probably 
well, maybe a little bit longer, 28 inches or so, um, just long enough so that it'll stay under the rock. And then the next step, we just put landscape fabric on it to separate the dirt from the rock because it'll clog the pipes. It'll also clog those voided spaces between and you just get mud. And so it won't, it'll just soak it all up. And so um, if you don't put that barrier between it, you don't really ever just have standing water in there. We're feeding it under the board so it's just straight on top of the rock instead of up and over. And we actually cover, you have to make sure you cover that PVC pipe because if not, the mud will get up inside that PVC pipe. Um, Colt is making a slit in it just so it'll kind of go around that pipe. You just cut it down a little way so you can kind of tuck it around. And he's putting rocks um, along the edges like this. And that's really just to kind of hold the, in place so that it doesn't move around when you start dumping dirt on it. Does it matter what kind of landscape fabric you choose? No, not really. Um, you want something that the water can seep through. So you don't want it so thick that it stops anything. You know, like the plastic you use so that nothing grows. You don't want that, but you don't want the thinnest stuff either because it's going to deteriorate over time. Have you ever done, like I'm thinking of the landscape fabric I have at home and it would not span four feet. It's probably like a three foot. Have you ever done double, like smaller, or do you try to get the four foot to fit? Yeah, we just, we um, always make, every one of our beds are three foot or four foot. And so, and I choose the width of the bed based on what I'm going to plant in it. So if I'm growing stuff up, I only use three foot beds because it doesn't take up a much space. Um, but even on a three foot bed, I just use four foot and I just kind of fold it over. All right, so now is the fun part, right? Now's the dirt, yes. Okay, so tell me what kind of soil you're filling this with. So it's composted dirt. It comes from a friend of ours that has a cattle farm and he takes the dirt off of the fields, which he doesn't spray anything on it. And, uh, he turns it with the unused hay during the winter. And so after about the second year, um, it's ready to use. And so it, it's got cow manure and dirt and, you know, all those decom um, the stuff that decomposes over time in there, mostly the bales of hay. All right, so it's all filled with this amazing compost. Explain a little bit more in detail how this works. Like we saw how you did it but how does the water actually get up to the soil? So these beds have a different, have several different names. They call them wicking beds. They call them uh, self-watering beds, capillary beds. But basically you have a reservoir of water and the water leaches up. That just means that it just soaks up. And so at any point um, you can come and dig down that far and the water, the dirt is, is damp. And so that water just, the dirt soaks it up through there and um, to where the roots are, it'll come up about 12 inches. But like an example is when you put a paper towel into a cup with water, you can see that water move up the paper towel. It just seeps up to the top. That's exactly how the dirt works in this. It just takes that water like a straw and just, sucks it up and so it brings it up to where the root systems are in the plant and it always waters from the bottom. Wow I mean I can like I said I can imagine how much water that saves in general and yes. as you mentioned you've seen it with your eyes how much more lush the plants are like it would be interesting to compare my garden and yours in August yeah because <laughs> I'm sure it will be a big difference. Well I mean it looks like I water every day and I never water and the only time I ever have a water hose in my garden is in the heat of the summer if it has not rained and I put it in the pipe to fill the reservoir because uh, 12 inches of water will last about a week but as your plants get bigger the root systems get bigger they drink more water so sometimes it's you know a little less but the way I tell if I need to fill it is I just dig down if I get down about two inches and it's still dry I know it needs water um, but I try to get into the routine in the heat of the summer to just put the water hose in there once a week, whether I'm, whether it needs it or not, because that overflow pipe will let me know how much water it needs. And so if it comes out immediately, it's full, 
but if it goes for a while, then it needed water. But uh, they just get that constant um, watering of themselves as they need it versus watering them real heavy one day and then being busy and forgetting to water it the next. And that's what puts stress on the plants. And so you have better foliage, um, you have better harvest produce. Um, the plants are just overall healthier because of that consistent um, watering from the bottom. Um, it also keeps from having blights because the rainwater splash, you know, I mean, you're just having the water splashing up on your plant with the dirt, so you don't get those issues as much. Um, so it's just water's bottom up. And I can imagine too, because you're not having to water with city water as often, you don't have the chlorinated water right. that I, I think can, de can affect the microbial yeah. life in mm -hmm. the soil when you yeah. have a lot of that chlorinated water. And right. that could be part of my problem in the middle of the summer, not that they're not watered enough, but right. they're watered with chlorine water all the time. Right. And I do it as least amount as I can. Mm -hmm. um, but you know how in the summer it just doesn't rain very often, so you don't really have a choice unless you have a well. Right. You know, that would be a good, uh, we just don't have a well, so we just use the, but um, most of the time I never, haven't watered and you can see the the garden behind us and of course it has rained a lot but it will look like that in July it because it doesn't really know that there's a drought you know so yeah. and it doesn't know that humans forget to water <laughs> yeah <laughs> they just drink as they need it you know so well and you do have the option of versatility too because mm -hmm. as we have over here you do trellis a lot of I do. vegetables in here um, we haven't constructed the trellises yet but we do have the materials to do it um, so I grow everything I can I grow up just because it's easier you don't have to bend over and it takes up much less space we use heavy-duty uh, hog wire or just any of the really stiff wire there's different kinds horse wire um, but you just got to get it big enough squares so you're produce doesn't get stuck in the middle uh, so um, like we have this piece right here and um, I think these were what's the inches uh, they're four by four squares four by four squares you can get them bigger or you can get them smaller um, smaller the produce is going to get stuck in the middle we just attach two by fours on the ends and then we use the little staples that you have to hammer in and like fencing staples and it is really stiff and it holds up the weight of the plants and it holds up storms you know it doesn't blow it and so we've had ours for years and we haven't had to replace it or anything because it's that really heavy corrugated i mean this really heavy duty metal so many options and the biggest thing is you don't have to spend as much time watering you can yeah. spend more of your time actually in the garden doing what you love i think that's what the reason why we built so many of these we started off with just two then we went to four and then we went to 25 and then here we have 14 or 15 but we started as we got older realized that time was money and so we had to pay a little bit of extra but now i don't have to do the back breaking work as much and i can actually enjoy when i come out here so and it doesn't take as much time so well tammy this has been so much fun i've learned a lot like i said i'm gonna be hitting my husband up to hopefully doing this on our next raised bed and I think this gives people really a great option, especially there's so many parts of the country that they are experiencing persistent drought. Mm -hmm. And I just think this will be a great solution for so many people. So thank you so much for bringing us along for the ride. Well, the nice part is you can have it anywhere in town, in the country, it doesn't really matter. You can put these anywhere. And so it makes gardening easier, you know. And for those of you guys in Arkansas, or if you're traveling through Arkansas, because it's a great place to visit, <laughs> be sure to check out Green Thumb Nursery here in Russellville, Arkansas, and like and subscribe to this channel for more how-to videos like this one.